Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to give you an introduction to baking. This will be part of a bigger course where I'll go into more detail about the different aspects and the different times you'll need to use baking. So if you don't know already, baking is where you take a complex texture and turn it into a single map. It's really important if you've got large procedural textures and you're trying to put them into a game, you'll need to bake those textures out into the individual maps so that you can put them in your game engine materials. It's useful for this to understand nodes and the PBR workflow, so do have a look at those videos. I'll put a card in the corner and a link in the description. So here we are in the basic scene. I'm going to use a UV sphere instead of the default cube because it's more interesting to look at. So I'll delete the default cube, shift A, add a UV sphere. I'm also going to right click shade smooth and just so it looks a tiny bit nicer, I'm going to grab this light, put it there and just duplicate it so we've got a bit of shading on our object very, very basic three point lighting. So into the shading tab and let's set up a shader for this UV sphere. So click on the UV sphere, click new and a very simple shader. So I'm going to plug something into the base color and then I'm going to bake it out as a single texture. So let's make a sort of complicated shader. So shift A to add and we'll grab a texture. We'll use the brick texture. I'll squash this up a bit so we can see a bit more here and let's plug that into the color. So we've got our brick texture there. And now just have a bit of fun playing with the different settings and the sliders and make something weird and wonderful. Now I'm going to put something into the vector. So shift A, texture, musgrave texture. And let's chuck that into the vector. Oh, look at that, looking interesting and weird. Now, if you haven't already, and I do mention this quite often, make sure you've got the Node Wrangler installed. It's really helpful. If you haven't, edit, preferences, add-ons, type in, node wrangler and there is the node wrangler add-on make sure it's ticked that way i can press Control shift left click and it will give me just that node Control shift left click and i've got the musgrave texture there and Control shift left click and i'm back to my principal bsdf okay this is quite fancy and fun let's bring in a color ramp to change the colors of these different things so shift a converter color ramp chuck that in the middle there and let's change the colors. So we've got some interesting blues. So that's the making the dark bits blue, this color ramp. I'm gonna press the plus sign, click on that color and make the middle bits pink. And I quite like that, that's quite interesting. <laughs> and maybe add another one. I should put that there and change this one to sort of mid purples. Oh, this is fun, isn't it? So color ramps will do that. So it's taking this grayscale information and turning it into these colors as we can put along here. And remember, I'm pressing Control Shift, left click to view those different nodes, and this is the final output. So obviously we can't take this into our game engine like this because it's not an image texture. So we need to convert it into an image texture so we can plug it into the albedo or the diffuse, whatever the color slot is called in your game engine. So we need to create a texture for it to go on. So I'll come across to my texture panel over here and click new, and this is going to be swirly color bake. I'll leave it at 1024 by 1024 and I'll turn the alpha off because we haven't got any transparency. It will just make your texture file size bigger. Press OK and there's our new texture. So now we want to bake this information out onto this texture. In order to do that, we'll need this texture in our shader editor. So Shift A, Texture, Image Texture. And we don't need to hook it up to anything. We just need it in there and selected. So let's go in and select it. Swirly Color Bake. So now it's selected and it's the right texture. Do make sure it's selected, that's really important, so it's highlighted white. We can now go across to our render tab over here, so render properties. Now you'll notice there's no bake option. That's because we're in Eevee and Eevee doesn't allow you to bake. You have to be in cycles, so change across the cycles. I do find as well that if you're on your GPU, it can crash occasionally, so make sure that you're on your CPU. Having said that, Maybe it's updated a bit more for Blender 2.8 and it's okay. Okay, now we have the bake panel because we're in cycles, we've got the bake. So let's open that up. And we've got some different options here. So the bake type is what sort of bake do you want? And we can do a combine. So that would take all the light information and the reflections as well into account. But obviously we don't want that. We just want this color image here for our base color for our texture. I'll be talking about the other ones in later episodes. So I'm going to change this across to diffuse, which is the color input. Now you can have the direct and indirect lighting affected, but we don't want that. So we'll turn those off. We just want the color. 
So now we can press bake and you can see the texture bake box at the bottom here, slowly going up. And then you can see the results appear over here in our texture. Make sure you save it. So these three lines, image, save as, and there's my original one. I prefer this one now, swirly color bake two and save. Now you'll see when I hook this up to the base color, it's exactly the same. But what you will notice when I change them over between each other is the quality will reduce because obviously we're going from this procedural, which is sort of vector based to a pixel based and we're starting to see the pixels in here. So that's something you'll need to consider when you're setting up your materials and when you're baking out, how high resolution do you want your maps and how much detail do you want to put in your texture that won't come across in your final bake. So do be aware of those things. Okay, so that's the first step of baking, understanding how to go from a big procedural texture into a basic texture like this. In the next episodes, we'll talk about baking normal maps, roughness maps. We'll talk about creating normal maps from sculpts, multi-resolution modifiers, and how to bake from one texture to another. If you've got game models that you want to copy their texture but change it somehow, there's lots of different applications for this. So let me know if you've got any questions in the comments below. So thanks for watching and I hope this helps.